Hi, Wellspring family. My name is Sarah Vandermeer. For those of you who don't know me, and my husband Steve and I have been attending Wellspring for a little while. But I was very excited when Mark uh, had and Andrew had asked me to summarize the sermon for November 8th. So I am going to do that now. So the sermon was titled How to Engage the Bible, and he kind of goes through the different translation types and um, different kind of things when it comes to reading the Bible that you can use. Um, so I'm going to kind of summarize the three kind of main types. Uh, so there's the formal translation, which um, the most common one people probably have heard of is the ESV, um, English Standard Version, but there's also the New King James Version, uh, the NASV 95, don't ask me what it stands for, and the CSV. Um, and the formal translation is essentially, he kind of said it's like your word for word translation of the Bible from the original text into English. Um, so they try and kind of translate it word from word. Um, if you were relating it to a movie, Mark said it's kind of like your black and white movie, very kind of do do do. <laughs> um, the next translation type is your dynamic equivalent. Um, the New International Version, or NIV, is the most read uh, translation in the world, and that is a dynamic equivalent translation. So it preserves the meaning without having to have the word-for-word -word, um, translation. It preserves the meaning of what the text was saying. Um, so it's very reader-friendly that way. It's kind of like color TV, um, is what Mark said. and. So NIV is an uh, option from there. There's also the NLT, which is what I read as a teenager. And the NIRV, which Mark kind of said is a bit like a paraphrase and is a grade three reading level. So anyone who's starting out with kids on the Bible or um, even someone who's English, English as a second language, that's a great option for them. Um, and yeah, <laughs> and then, um, the third one he kind of uh, mentioned was translation of, what is it? Translation of, I can't read my own writing. Translation of personal. Anyway, I don't, but essentially these are like your passion or your message. So it's true to the original text, but the language might be embellished a little um, for your perception. And so uh, Mark kind of talked about how this is like watching in 3D with 3D glasses on. Um, so it, he also suggested that this is uh, a complementary to the dynamic or the um, formal translations, but that this shouldn't be the kind of translation that you base your theology off of. Um, he, he also mentioned there are different um, types of like things that you can use as a secondary to your Bible reading. So um, there's... Concordance, which essentially is a search engine, which, you know, for all the millennials out there, just use Google and find this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, there is, there are a couple of different search engines. So there's Bible.com, which also anyone who has the app on their phone, it's you version, um, BibleGateway.com. And then there's also Logos.com. And each uh, kind of has your concordance, which um, gives you like, looking up for, I think it's when you look up, like it's kind of like an encyclopedia, I guess. <laughs> you can tell I'm a millennial. <laughs> and then um, there's lexicomps, which are, if you have a word, it will delve into that word and it's how that word was used, um, how it was used in the old days, how it's used in the new days, male, female, all like anything to do with that word, it will tell you about. So uh, Mark said it's a bit of a rabbit hole, but um, there's lexicomps and then commentaries, and I've actually used commentaries. Um, he said there is a good measure of bias in them, so you do have to like kind of, you know, use some critical thinking when you're reading with a commentary, but it does have a lot of good info, and I do find it gives a little bit of the historical background, um, so it's nice to read along with um, your Bible. But Bible.com and BibleGateway.com and Logos.com have lexicomps, commentaries, all that kind of in some you have to pay for, some you don't, but there are good options to look up if you need to. And finally, he did mention just um, before you're reading the Bible, pray, ask God to kind of 
reveal himself to you through the word, speak to you. Um, ask questions as you're reading the Bible too. Um, what was the original writer trying to communicate or what is God speaking to me? Um, and just note, like, if you're not a reader, there are so many other options. There's audio, um, just like you listen to, you know, different sermons on audio. You can also listen to the Bible on audio. Um, but it really is the number one tool to grow spiritually in our lives. Um, I know my husband and I, Steve likes ESV and I like NIV. I'm more like a straight to the point kind of person and he really likes all the historical, you know, um, word for word kind of stuff. So when we read together at night, we'll read the same chapter and one night he'll read out loud and he'll read an ESV and the next night I'll read out loud and I'll read an NIV and we'll follow along and we can kind of compare the two and have a discussion. So if you have a spouse or a friend, um, you know, it's a great option to do to kind of just keep you accountable or at least get you to start reading the Bible um, and know that actually on you version there's a way that you can do it even if you can't see someone in physical you can share notes with someone like via the app so you can kind of keep in touch that way and keep accountable but I hope everyone is staying safe and well and um, we're so grateful for Mark and uh, Andrew and the whole pastoral team for taking care of us and serving us during this time and I hope that everyone has a great week and we will see you Sunday.